Welcome back. So today I'd like to introduce you to additive synthesis inside of Serum. It lives inside the wavetable edit window. You just have to go looking for it. Um, and this is not uh, even anywhere near subtractive synthesis. So let's clear something up right away. Adding oscillators is not additive synthesis. It's a common misconception. If your synth has an oscillator and then a filter and then an amp, regardless of what else is involved, there's at least a measure of subtractive synthesis there because you're carving away part of your sound with the filter. Okay, that's what subtractive means. When you're using multiple oscillators at once in a subtractive synth, that is not an additive process. And here's why. There's this theory that says every sound can be taken down to, at its very core, simple sine waves. So there's another theory, the inverse of that. It's called the fast Fourier transform theory. And this is what we call additive synthesis. It basically says that if you can boil any sound in the world down to simple sine waves, that you can make any sound in the world out of sine waves. You just have to add them together in the right order or in the right way. Let's figure that out. How in the world do we do that, right? Sine waves, they don't have harmonics. So let's see what's actually going on here. Um, by default, when we open up Serum, we've got this sawtooth wave. Um, if we just simply add one harmonic way down here at the base, we have a sine wave. And sure enough, if you were to go back, initialize this patch, open up analog shapes, the basic shapes, and load up a simple sine wave, you're gonna see if you go into the additive window that it's just one column right here. Now, how this works is we could add another sine wave at a different frequency, and it's going to affect the overall shape of our sound, which of course affects our timbre, right? Now, if you listen carefully, you can actually hear the individual tones being played. There's one. Here's two. Here's three. Right now, as we increase the presence of one of these, it becomes more dominant and it also affects the shape of our sound. Now, this may not seem like a very intuitive way to make sounds, and it really is not at first. Um, it can be over time. Now, to help you get started with this, because again, this is pretty daunting stuff, right? It's not at all what we're thinking of when we're looking at a wavetable synth like uh, Serum, where we're actually loading up complete sounds. Consider this. This is one cycle. This is one wave cycle. So at the lowest fundamental here, with this baseline sine wave here, this is what happens in the, in the amount of time of this one frame. Now, if we add this, you can see that um, in bin 27 here, that the rate of oscillation for this sine wave is many times greater than the oscillation rate of this sine wave. Okay, so there's one cycle to the many cycles over here. In fact, you could even count them. But these are individual sine wave cycles happening in the same amount of time that this one happens in. Okay, so that should help you gain a pretty decent understanding of the basic concept here. If we go way up, we're gonna be adding more and more and more busyness to our waveform. And if we go way down, we'll be adding less, okay? And in fact, if you were really systematic about how you were doing this, you could start building uh, waves that you will eventually start to recognize. Now, that's just the top row here. The bottom row here is phase and phase is the position of the waveform being rendered. That's all, okay? So as you can see, the sine wave starts to look a lot more complex than just a basic sine wave as soon as we alter the phase or the position of our waveform. Although it's still basically playing back the same thing. We're just looking at it at a different stage of its cycle, okay? Sort of. There's also this. 
This is the beginning, this is the end of that cycle. And this is a pretty big leap from here to here. We call this our zero crossing point. So as we add more and more uh, sine waves and we start to affect their phase, we start to see very different types of waveforms emerge. And we start to get very interesting results. Now, how do we actually start doing something intentionally? That is a great question. Let's find uh, something interesting. Maybe this uh, mellow but instable. Looks pretty interesting. So we have this waveform right here and we could click on any one of these cells. And if we click this button right here, it's gonna render that in our additive view and we can actually see what kind of programming is going in, in additive synthesis mode, to create this specific waveform. And if we click on this cell and render it up here, we'll see that indeed there were changes. So this could help you begin to gain a semblance of understanding in the beginning of where you might want to start as far as affecting your sounds or even building sounds from scratch using additive synthesis. Um, it's really helpful to be able to see how additive synthesis interprets the, uh, the shapes or the waveforms that you currently have loaded in your wavetables. Um, not many tools provide you an opportunity um, for this kind of insight. Um, Absinthe is another tool. So if you don't have Serum and you're watching this and you do have Absinthe, you can actually do this inside of Absinthe as well. Um, it's fascinating. But this is what additive synthesis is. So um, hopefully that clears up exactly what it is, how it works, and how you can use it inside of Serum, and how you can actually start making it part of a relevant workflow for you as well. Okay, Deconstruction is your friend. Being able to reconstruct something means that you're actually starting to understand the processes involved. So once you're able to reconstruct stuff from scratch, you know you're on your way. You know you're on your way. All right, folks, hope you enjoyed this one. Um, hope it encourages you to at least try additive synthesis if you haven't already. Leave a comment below. Let us know what you think. Let us know what you want to see next time in a tutorial. Thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you again next time. Cheers. If you're a music producer, subscribe to our channel and stay up to date on the latest PureMind tutorial videos, trash breakdowns, elite sessions, and more. Visit us at puremind.com.